Hello people of YouTube, Deepak here again in DCS World flying the MI8 and today we're going to take a little look at uh, radio navigation. Uh, now the MI8 has two primary radio navigation radios. If I jump over to the pilot navigator seat we can get a look at them here. You have the ARC-9 here. Now this is generally used for tuning non-directional beacons for the purposes of radio navigation. Uh, non-directional beacons are found at most airports and also some are dotted at uh, kind of certain locations uh, around the map to aid navigation. We also have the ARC UD which is this panel here. Now this is uh, this is also a, a kind of NDB radio but it's actually preset with six channels plus one which is on UHF which you can switch to from here and uh, this is used for search and rescue. Uh, generally um, ELTs and, and other types of um, emergency beacons will transmit on the frequencies that this unit supports. And um, in conjunction with these, you would also use your radio panel up here so that you can listen into uh, the stations tuned on here and ensure you have the correct ones tuned. So um, what I'm going to do first, uh, actually I'm going to tune my, my main radio. So I'm going to switch my panel to radio. I'm going to switch my command radio to AM. And my command radio is all the way down here. I'm going to tune that to uh, 141 because that's the frequency of our local ATC. We're at uh, Bizlan today. There we go, 141. Just check the squelch. Yep, that's working. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit so I can hear what I'm doing. And uh, let's get in touch with them, just make sure our radio is working. Oh, a bit redundant, we are actually already started up. Reset my radar altimeter. Okay, he's now happy. Um, okay, I'm going to tune my NDB to 250 and turn it on and switch to ARC 9 so I can listen in. And that should be us tuned into Bizlan. So for Bezlan, we are expecting, I think, yeah, dash dot, dash dot, yeah, that's it there. Okay, so we are correctly tuned. I'm now going to turn this back to our uh, R863, and uh, now, so you basically, that's us turned on here. This was set to compass, uh, and I tuned the left receiver. Uh, I can use the rotary at the bottom to move the big numbers and the rotary in the middle to move the, the middle numbers and then this little tuning knob allows me to tune the individual digits and I get a signal reading up here. I also have a switcher down here that allows me to switch between the two tuners. Uh, I'm actually just going to use the left hand one. You've got a left hand and a right hand tuner. Both can be tuned at once and you can flip between them. It's very useful for en route navigation. Now once this is actually tuned um, the pilot navigator's compass will point at it and also the uh, pilot commander's compass will point at it. Now, the pilot commander's compass is the only one that can actually display the ARC UD, uh, and you actually switch to the ARC UD by flicking this switch. So you get the option of the ARC 9 or the ARC UD. Now that that's all set, we will set up the ARC UD. Now it defaults to channel 1. I already have something transmitting on channel 1, so we just turn it on and set it to narrow mode. If we get a light, it means that it has a signal. And if you want to listen to what it's picking up, you just flick your selector all the way across to RQD. And you will hear the uh, Eagle Dynamics campaign victory music. Uh, that was the only thing I could safely put on it and avoid any sort of copyright infringement. So <laughs> there you go. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. But I'm going to leave it playing. <laughs> so that we can hear that in the background and we know that we're picking up a signal. So there we go, it's just nice and quiet. So, with that tuned, and we can hear the signal, pointer is pointing. Now, one thing to note, the uh, the radio navigation equipment in the MI-8 is a little bit simplistic. Um, most modern aircraft would also have, associated with these radios, something called a DME, which is a distance measuring equipment. Now, that would actually give you a range to the signal source. Unfortunately, in the MI-8, we don't have that. We're only actually getting a bearing. So. 
Um, there are a couple of ways of trying to figure out how close you are to a target. You can fly at a, at a bearing offset and watch how much the needle moves. It's pretty simplistic and old school, but it does give you an indication of how close you are to the target. Okay, so what we're going to do is first we're going to fly directly to that um, directly to that particular uh, radio source. So let's take off. Oh, and there's a friend taking off. Now this uh, this particular radio source, as you can probably tell from its uh, transmissions, uh, is uh, a local radio station playing music. <laughs> or at least that's what I'm trying to simulate with it. Okay, so I'm flying roughly in the right direction. Now with these NDBs you're always going to get a little bit of fluctuation as well, so something that's quite good to do is to set your heading pointer on the current signal. I'm actually going to turn on my autopilot heading mode as well, which should make things a little bit easier. And um, yeah, you'll see that every so often the needle kind of goes out of sync, flips around a bit and then goes back on heading. So it is a good idea to use your, your little heading indicator to try and keep track of where it's actually pointing. So what we should notice is that as we approach this uh, this radio tower, the, the source will become stronger. So actually the music is going to become a little bit louder as we go closer. Um, I've sort of simulated something that, that approximates a fraction of what a real radio tower's output power would be. Um, so actually if we were to fly far, far away enough, the signal would start to degrade and, and break up and get very quiet. Now, um, once we've approached this radio tower, I've set a little trigger, something will happen and we'll have to respond to it and actually tune a different frequency on our ARC UD just to demonstrate how that's done. And the whole time, if I flip my, my little switch back again, my needle is going to point towards Bizlan and we can use that for navigating home at the end of the mission. But for now, we'll leave it on the ARC UD. So, just the other side of this town should be the location of the radio tower. So I'll see if I can see it visually yet. Well, actually, yes, yes, I, it is very much visible. That's the source of our delightful music. I'm going to turn it up for a moment just so you can enjoy that. I just have it on a loop, as you may have noticed. Oh, oh dear. A civilian MI-26 has crashed near Gamerzivo. Provide assistance. Okay, so I just happen to know that um, the ELT on that aircraft is on channel 2. So I'm going to switch to channel 2. And we have a very faint signal. Uh, obviously these, uh, these emergency beacons are much lower output power. But anyway, I I've tuned it, I have a light, I can hear the signal. And now if I take a look at my pilot commander's compass, it is now pointing somewhere else. So, uh, actually, before I make my manoeuvre, let's change our heading bug. And then let's turn towards the source of this uh, emergency beacon. And we... Anyone who understands Russian will realise that uh, it's just a loop of some guy requesting uh, combat search and rescue. Might get a little bit annoying once we get closer, so I may need to turn it down. But uh, at this range, it's kind of quiet. <laughs> now you should notice that as we get closer, he gets a little bit louder. And actually, we, we must be quite close, because you'll see that even if I'm slightly off course, the needle does start to deviate a lot. So, um, although we don't have distance measuring equipment, we do get a vague indication of our range to the, to the, to the radio source. Ooh, actually, I'm, I'm sort of approaching our speed limit, so let's uh, bring the nose up a little. Well, of course, we do want to reach them nice and quick. Just going to pop on my landing lights so that they can see us coming in nice and clear. 
and I'll start a gentle descent because I'm guessing that we must be quite close to the signal source by now. So I'm aiming just very slightly off of that heading and again that's going to give me a nice indication of when we're close because we should get a nice deviation uh, on the needle. I need to increase my descent a little bit. Okay, and we should uh, make sure not to descend onto power lines. That's uh, a very bad way to end a mission. No, <laughs> actually, I think the one of the pylons triggered my low altitude warning. There must have just bounced the radar nicely. So I'm thinking that we must be at this stage very close to our target. That's our low altitude warning coming on. Yes, there's definitely something up ahead. I see a red object. Oh, and some troops on the ground. Yeah, okay, I'm guessing that's where we want to be. So, let's get in nice and low and approach the target. Reduce speed. And watch out very carefully for Vortex Ring. Okay, land next to the helicopter and provide assistance. Doesn't look like there's much of a helicopter left, but uh, anyway, we will do our best. And we are down. Yes, uh, dearie me. That's quite a mess. Looks like they have suffered something of a crash. Uh, I'm just going to turn off that because we don't need it anymore. I will set our radio compass back to the Arc 9, which will point us back towards Bezlan. Well, yes. I don't really know how much assistance we can possibly provide here. Let's just assume that uh, we have uh, taken on board any survivors. And we will now make our way back to Bezlan at best speed. So, um, I have Bezlan tuned. I have my AM radio selected. And I have my ARC-9 selected on my compass. And I have the Bezlan outer marker selected. So. Without any further ado, let's get on the move. We have casualties on board who need to be rushed back to Bezlan as quickly as possible. Uh, once I've got some speed and altitude and I'm up and running I will set my heading bug again as before okay oh. there we go okay heading bug is set and we will make best speed for Bezlan which is about what I'm doing now actually it's pretty much our maximum speed level out my climb a bit as well. Don't want to get too high. There's actually a quite low cloud cover today which we should avoid flying into because we're very much flying visually here. And we should call up Bezlan and let, us, let them know that we're on the way.
Okay, now by the time we reach there to marker the runway should be in sight. And just for a little bit, let's uh, let's enjoy the music again. Why not? Oh, there we go. That's perfect. I have the airbase in sight. Uh, so, I'll turn off our intermission music, <laughs> switch back to the AM radio, and shortly I should be able to request a landing. See, although the, the navigational facilities on the MI-8 are quite basic, um, if you make good use of these two directional radios, you shouldn't find it too bad. Uh, and of course, you do have the, the rather advanced Doppler navigation system, but that's a story for another day. Okay, runway in sight. I'm going to proceed down runway heading. And start to descend nice and slow. Uh, this airbase is, is very, very basic. It doesn't have much in the way of taxiways, so you, you have to travel down the runway and there's actually a, a runway exit onto the the main taxiway just uh, halfway down the runway on the left hand side so uh, I don't want to touch down right at the touchdown point I'll make my way swiftly to the middle of the runway okay cleared visual Okay, I'm going to start to arrest my descent about here and travel straight down the runway. And now I'm going to bring my speed down. Tap the brakes to make sure they're released and we're down. Continue taxiing. going to make an exit left. Okay, and runway's clear. So we'll make our way over to the ramp. And we're just going to stop over here by the fire station. Make the assumption that uh, these chaps in the back need to be unloaded in quick order.
Okay, we're at a halt. Parking brake on. And rear clamshell doors open. Okie dokie. Mission accomplished. I think that pretty much covers it. So, uh, just a, a quick summary. Arc 9 here allows you to tune to navigational NDBs. The Arc UD here allows you to tune to all kinds of other types of beacon, primarily used for search and rescue. And the, the pilot commander has the ability to switch between the two using this switch here. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.